I think it's safe to say that Starfield has proven to be a very divisive and polarizing experience. And uh, I don't think that that's too surprising because the fact that really the last decade or so, but all Bethesda experiences have been treated that way. Fallout 4, Fallout 76, Elder Scrolls Blades, and uh, even Skyrim Special Edition had a number of issues. I don't even think it ran on the Switch for a number of months, but all of Bethesda's experience have had problems and they've been talked about endlessly within their respective communities. Now, we're obviously having these discussions more frequently about Starfield because this was the grand new IP coming from Bethesda. They hyped this up, there was tons of marketing, and it just didn't really reach the heights that I'm sure Bethesda expected it to. And there's been a lot more criticism with Bethesda's design because a lot of people are starting to realize that this stuff is just starting to age extremely poorly. And I explored some of this in my recent video discussing the lack of progress that Starfield has made over the last number of months, and I've gotten a lot of responses saying, well, look at Cyberpunk, look at, look at no no Man's Sky. Those games took years to evolve, and the thing is with Starfield, there's no indication that that game is going to be getting this treatment. Sure, there's some stuff on the way that we're going to be talking about in this video, but Cyberpunk and No Man's Sky drastically expanded their experiences. And it also needs to be noted the fact that those games' as foundation, I would argue, is they were in a lot better of a shape compared to Starfield, and I think that does go down to the, the tech that those games are built on. And uh, with Starfield specifically, we had Todd Howard talking about some of the criticism that they've received. And it just makes me to believe that Todd does not understand or fully grasp what people are criticizing. We have this PC Gamer article headline here saying, Todd Howard reckons he knows why Starfield was so divisive. It was too different than you've seen from us in the past. And I don't think Starfield is too different. I think it just does things differently that it doesn't work at all. I think in particular, everybody's going to bring up, this is the main one, but it's the fact that you have all these little open areas that are split off, and a lot of them are just barren and boring and not fun to explore, especially with the fact that a lot of it's just radiant content. And within a number of hours, you're going to get the same thing. It's this outpost, which has a couple of scientists sitting around, and you have to go take out a raider outpost air. It's the same thing. I mean, we saw this in Fallout 4. There's a lot of elements of Fallout 4 in Starfield, especially within the, you know, the outpost and uh, shipbuilding is very similar to what we had in Fallout 4. The gunplay is very similar. And then we also have the fact that Skyrim powers are literally a major part of Starfield's endgame. Now, I do want to discuss Todd Howard's remarks because he goes into detail and we'll we'll go over it. Let's go. So we have this interview coming from Kinda Funny Games. They interviewed Todd Howard and they asked him the question of, you know, what does he make about Starfield and the divisive reaction? And this is what he had to say. You've talked about it and you've seen me on this show talk about it. I love Starfield, right? And you said something I thought interesting when we were talking about fallouts where you're like, oh, well, you know, the show is this person's favorite entry, which is great. And, I, you know, blah, blah, blah. I said how much I like Starfield. The chat over here is then on fire of people who loved it or hated it or whatever in between, right? My question for you is the reception at launch of Starfield. How does that affect you and the team? Because what I thought was different, uh, different about the lead up to Starfield was that you were all wearing your hearts on your sleeves and saying, this is the game we've always wanted to make. We are. Ma this is like something that so means so much to us. And so when you get there and you get a game that is then polarizing to this level, what was the takeaway? What was the office like on launch day, review day, all those? Well, there's a few things, um, and thanks for asking. The number one that we're always concerned with is how is the game holding up, right? What's our sure. bug level? What's the crash rate? So first of all, we were over the moon with how kind of um, the, the actual data we were getting back and how the game was performing on a technical level, that one to us is always sort of most important on the dev side. Number two was the amount of players. I'll stop yeah. there and just point out the fact that while Starfield is probably the most polished Bethesda game to date, it definitely had a lot of issues and a lot of bugs, all of which I documented in my review at the time. Um, Bethesda gets away with this just because of the fact that they are Bethesda and their previous experiences have been absolute nightmares and Starfield wasn't any bit close to that, but it still was <laughs> nowhere near the word, I would say. It wasn't really up to par what we, with what we see from other game developers, which, uh, say what you will, but Bethesda, they certainly get a free pass in that regard just because of the fact that the game was, you know, not as broken or it, it ran mostly kind of set a record for how many players that we had in a game. Obviously, Game Pass is a part of that. Of course. You know. But to see the amount of people playing and like, okay, we've had more players at launch than we've ever had in our careers, and the game is holding up really well, 
it's a really joyous moment for us, particularly after how long the game took. I mean, that's an achievement in of itself. Of course, yes, Starfield had a lot of players at launch, but if we get into the actual nitty gritty, well, I mean, Starfield has about 3,400 players. This game was built to be something that people played for years to come, and the interest is not there. Again, maybe that changes with the content to come. And I believe on Steam right now, they actually just launched the new May update, and yeah, right now it's got about under... 4,000 players. For what it's worth, Skyrim Special Edition, based on Steam charts, never got under around 9,000 players, and this is just the Special Edition. So, say what you will, but I definitely don't think Starfield is reaching the heights that it was intended to, especially right out of the gate. But hey, maybe that is because it is a brand new IP, and the, the level of love of this franchise isn't the same as, say, you know, Fallout and the Elder Scrolls. But even on the most played Microsoft page here, it, it's a similar story. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 42, is, or 44, something like that, is where finally Starfield turns in, in the most played Xbox games as of this moment. And ahead of it is Skyrim Special Edition, Fallout 4, Fallout 76 are obvious, and then a number of other games. But I just think that what Bethesda was trying to achieve with Starfield, it doesn't feel like it f fully was achieved. Sure, you had a bunch of players at launch, but that was because of a massive marketing campaign hyping this up as, you know, the biggest, newest thing coming from Bethesda, and a lot of people were interested in seeing it. And here we are eight or so months later, and that level of interest in this game has waned drastically. But uh, getting back to Todd Howard's interview with Kind of Funny, he next says this. On the review side, and we've been through this, so it's not sort of new. <laughs> what's new is, yeah, what's new is it's a new IP, so you know that we're going to be doing some things differently than we've done before. And obviously we had people who love the game, both on the review side, and people who liked it less. I think the, the, media, the majority of our reviews were in the 90s, um, which... Look, it um, about that one. That one's an interesting point because if you go to like a place like Metacritic right now, that's yeah, maybe that was the case with a number of reviews right at launch, but its average right now is around the mid 80s. And if you check both platforms, it's 85, 83. So around the 80s, which is I think it's right under what Fallout 4 had for review scores. But this is just the critic reviews. And if we actually get into the specifics of, you know, users, it's a much different story. Almost 100,000 reviews and only 61% of them are positive. Comparatively, Fallout 4's reviews, I believe, are like around 80%, and Fallout 76 even is around 70%. So, yeah, this is the most divided people have been about Bethesda ever with Starfield. But uh, we'll let Todd continue with his remarks, even though uh, 90s is not exactly what that's not how people felt about Starfield. That's great. I don't want to ever be in a, a world where that is not a, a, a great place to be in terms of kind of critical reception, particularly in a year where there are so many amazing games out. Sure. But obviously, look. Well, yeah, there's a reason why Starfield didn't really win any, more, any awards, and the only big award they won was a Troll Award by the Steam Awards, in which they celebrated on Twitter, which I just felt like, I, I don't know why they're doing that, but yeah, they lost out to Baldur's Gate 3. That was the big game that took the thunder from everybody. But we see the feedback. We see a lot of players saying, this is what I want out of a Bethesda game, um, which is to explore a world in a certain way, and Starfield didn't give me that. Um, I prefer the way it's done in Fallout or Elder Scrolls. And perfectly understandable, right? In terms of, hey, this is this is a different experience. And that, that's the incorrect takeaway though that Todd's making here. It's I'll let him continue with his remark, but that's incorrect. I do think, you know, for us, particularly me going into a science fiction game, I want to be able to land on all the planets. I want the game to say yes to us. No And that's fine, but the issue is that there has to be, you know, actual planets that have tons of enjoyable content and make you want to go to that location. That's the difference between, like, say, Fallout 4's The Commonwealth or Skyrim. Uh, those locations are iconic. There's tons of places within the hubs and the, the open areas to explore to find really cool discoveries and such. And Starfield... 
it just too too spread out and there's so much nonsense within the way it's just a lot of stuff to just you land on the space rock there's nothing there except the same radiant content that you've seen on space rock 103 or whatever and then even when you get to new atlantis or neon there's just not much there in way of you know interesting discoveries to find so yeah i think exploration with this game is nowhere near the quality of what we've seen with starfield i mean with fallout 4 and skyrim because of the fact that everything's so spread far apart. And then the fact that there's tons of loading screens in way of all of that, it just makes things even less immersive, which I think a lot of people do appreciate with past, past uh, Bethesda experiences. Knowing that that content is gonna be different than you've seen from us in the past when you're exploring a landscape. And that's some of the trade-offs we'll make to do what we think makes, you know, a science fiction game like this that's kind of based in this kind of fiction and reality to make it what it what it should be and you know each of the fr i just i don't feel like that that's an excuse that holds up like obviously starfield wasn't going out of its way to be mass effect obviously because there's no really intelligent alien species out there there are aliens out there but they're not intelligent and they're just beasts and hey maybe that changes with shattered spaces but uh I just feel like those games do a lot better of a job with immersing you within these alien worlds. And there's something very, something very unique about uh, Mass Effect and what it did. And with Starfield, it's just something that's quickly become forgettable because there's nothing iconic about New Atlantis. There's nothing iconic about Neon. There's nothing iconic about Space Cowboy Place that I can't remember the name of. And that's really the problem with a lot of Starfield is that I can't think of really many of the characters outside of Sarah Morgan. Um... The factions, even the history of the factions, the lore, it's just not, nothing, com it doesn't compare to Fallout and Sky the Elder Scrolls. And maybe that's something that was always going to be a problem, but, you know, I mean, Bethesda should have known that they have to have some really interesting deep lore for people to get attached to. Because at this point, again, not many people are interested in seeing more Starfield after Shattered Spaces. I think a lot of people just want to see them get back to Fallout, get back to the Elder Scrolls, and don't change that up for, I don't know how many years. But I, I, I just don't think there's interest in Starfield as a franchise because of how uninteresting Starfield is and the background lore that is established here. Franchises should kind of be its own thing. For sure. And so, I mean, that's fair, but that's not the case. That, you know, the maps or some other things, gameplay options uh, that we're adding, other display modes on console that people have asked for. And we want to do all that stuff, take some time, but we're excited to get stuff out there. And that stuff's fine. That is greatly appreciated. I said on Twitter a couple of days ago, said that a lot of this is too little too late. And I still feel it is. I still feel like this type of content should have been added a while ago but i'm all for it i just don't know how much further they're going to go than that well like you said what we got we got more dlc or an update an update getting announced this week you said in a couple days from now with some stuff uh, on yeah it should be yep. okay yep. okay good how imminent is that coming up then? and the content that he's actually talking about has been um it has been there's a video for it we can actually go to the beginning of this video i think it's around this mark we get our first look at the new city map so i'm going to mute the audio but hey it's city maps it definitely looks cluttered but it's I think for, this is a lot of stuff that's going to be great for new players, those who are just starting out with Starfield. Um, for those who have been playing for a while, a lot of this new content really isn't anything to jump in for. Maybe why the Steam charts hasn't blown up yet, but yeah. It, it definitely is appreciated that you can actually finally now see shops and stuff. This was one of my big gripes early on. I understand those that have hundreds of hours like, well, I know where everything is, but well, guess what? A lot of people just jumping in are very annoyed with the fact that they have no idea where anything is in this, uh, this hub area. And yeah. See, it definitely is something that uh, it's better than what was there, pretty much. And then they also announced new gameplay options here at the 102 mark. I'll go here which is um, you can customize a lot more of Starfield, which is greatly appreciated. I'll turn down the audio, really but yeah, cool. like you can greatly increase your carry capacity, which was really not that great in the base game. So that's great. Vendor credits can be increased. I love this type of customization for the game. Great to see it. It's awesome that it's here. And they also made it that you can now customize your ship interiors. Again, this is more of a late game activity, but it, it's awesome the fact that 
This is one of the big things that a lot of people do like about Starfield. The fact that you can customize your ship. Into the inside of the ships. And yeah, so you can add pretty much anything that you had in your outpost you can now add inside of your ship. They also made some uh, these these halves empty so you can really customize it completely to your liking, which I, I think it's great. I, I think this is all great content. I just don't think that this is going to drastically change impressions about Starfield at all. And then one of the big new additions that I will bring up other than, yeah, they got respec. You can respec your character now. That's cool and all. But one of the big new additions is the fact that there is now a performance mode. I think the options are 40 frames per second, 60, and you can prioritize what you want. Performance or visual. If they choose to prioritize performance, the target FPS will move to 60. And for players that have TVs that support VRR, they'll be able to choose between. And that's all great. This is all great new content. It's just. Again, I don't think it's changing impressions all that much about Starfield right now. And they also announced some new quality of life stuff, but what, probably the biggest new addition that's coming, or it's in development, who knows when it actually comes, is this. Drive around on planets. Obviously, we're working. Okay, well, they teased it. Pretty much land vehicles. This is something that uh, I feel like it should have been there day one, but they are finally adding in land vehicles. I have no idea how this is going to work. People understand that uh, Bethesda and vehicles have never been a great combination. I was right at launch, gave a lot of praise for the fact that ships actually functioned at all. Uh, Bethesda's last real land vehicle was, I think, what, horses and Skyrim? And my god, that was horrible to uh, experience. So we'll see how this functions. And uh, I'm sure there will be bugs because there always are. Even with this new May update, which I believe is right now in beta on Steam, there has been reported some major bugs with this new content, which is a given. It's not an official release. But uh, Todd Howard has also talked extensively about Shattered Spaces. He did say that the, it's going to be arriving in the fall. And then obviously the May update is here. So right now, I do think that Todd Howard just doesn't understand, you know, the gripes that people have with Starfield. I mean, this is the it was too different than you've seen from us in the past this is a ridiculous statement. I think a lot of people are just very demoralized by the quality of this content, which I don't think compares really up to games like Fallout in Skyrim or the Elder Scrolls franchise. I think that this is just an example of Bethesda not understanding that their community just does not feel their game design is up to par with the rest of this industry. And I understand the past, my last uh, video, I talked about some of the other games, what they're doing, which is better than Bethesda. I talked about like Cyberpunk with its uh, cutscenes. I think that was a poor wording. I really should have brought up the fact that their animation is just so much better. The facial animations, the movement of the characters is a lot more realistic and a lot more immersive compared to uh, the eyes and the faces of Bethesda characters. And uh, within this update, they actually added, I forgot to mention this, but there is a new dialogue camera option, which is actually very interesting because, uh, yeah, so you don't have to be right up against these individuals' faces anymore. You can actually be zoomed out, which actually, again, this is all is, nice quality of life stuff. I don't think it's going to drastically change people's view of the game, but it's awesome to see. And I just wonder how much more they're going to build off of this. And also with Shattered Spaces, they teased a little bit of here towards the end of the video if I can get the, let's see, yeah. Yeah, I, I have no idea what they're going with this. Hopefully it's an alien direction because this this franchise definitely needs a spark of interest, uh, especially if this is if people are going to be wanting, you know, Starfield 2 because right now that that is not there at all. Anyway, what do you make of Todd Howard's remarks? It was certainly something that got a lot of people very upset because of the fact that they don't feel like Todd Howard is properly understanding. Some people think he's just blatantly lying about it, but I don't know. Let me know what you feel about that down in the comment section below, but thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video or if you found any informative value. Consider subscribing for more videos like this. I'll see you later.